Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So we are in the UK now and in this video we're going to give you five reasons not to sail the med. So we're not going to talk through with you guys why we're here in the UK, not on our boat, etc. If you want to know anything about what's been going on with us, just check out any of our last few videos um, that you'll see popping up somewhere up here. Yeah. So let's get into it. So reason number one, and this mostly applies to people from the UK, so Brexit. It has made sailing around the Mediterranean a lot harder. So if you're not fully aware of what Brexit has actually meant uh, for UK cruisers, We'll link some kind of resources in the bottom where you can learn more, but essentially it means you're limited to 90 days out of every 190 days. So it's 90 days for all of Europe, with the exception of the non Schengen European countries. So this includes like Turkey, Croatia, Albania, and a few other ones as well. So be sure to look more into this if you're planning to sail to the Mediterranean because we have found it a really, really difficult factor for our adventures in the Mediterranean. What essentially it means is that if you want to cruise the Balearics for any extended period of time, you're kind of limited to that 90 days. But also, if you want to cruise the Balearics, that's 90 days. That's not 90 days to spend in the Balearics. You have to account for getting there and getting out. So if it's going to take you like a month to get from Gibraltar to the Balearics, you're only really going to have a month in the Balearics before you have to try and get back to Gibraltar, for example. So we found that we was actually a little bit more rushed than we would have liked whilst cruising the Mediterranean. We would have liked to have spent more time in places like the Balearic, Sardinia. We wanted to go to Corsica and we just couldn't do it. So obviously a lot of other countries other than the UK do also need to think about this really. It isn't just the UK, but I think the reason we found it difficult is purely because when we bought the boat, it wasn't a limiting factor. Yeah. We could sail Europe for as long as we wanted essentially. And now there's this new kind of thing to think about, this new limit. It has been quite frustrating. Um, and obviously you can do you can cope with it, you can deal with it, but we have found it a lot more rushed than we'd have liked. Yeah, um, for sure. Trying to race to the reset countries and things like that. So leading on from Brexit, another con we have found is the bureaucracy. And obviously around Shenzhen and Brexit <laughs> specifically, <laughs> Sorry about that. There is a lot of bureaucracy, so things like getting stamped in and out of countries and then getting this checked at the airport, all of that side of things has been another thing to think about. Yep. Um, but also, I guess, just bureaucracy in general in the Mediterranean. Yeah. So some of the points worth noting on bureaucracy is that even though the Schengen countries in Europe should all be following the same rules, they actually have their own different ways of doing it. So, for example, in Italy, Croatia and Greece, they give out paperwork which is like a transit log for your boat but in countries like Portugal and Spain you don't tend to see it or at least they don't even uh, talk about it and when we've gone into offices they haven't mentioned anything so we just don't think mm. it actually exists so there's just one difference between countries and then when you get to Italy they will ask for a transit log from when you first entered mm. Europe even though one wasn't issued and it can be really hard even just finding the information that you need to find. Like you can ask somebody something and they've never heard of it. You can be directed to one office and then they're directed to another office yeah. and to another office and another office. And it's really time consuming and really confusing. Going backwards and forwards. Yeah, I think that's been another con for us Absolutely. in the Mediterranean. So that kind of sums up the bureaucracy side of things. But if you're struggling as well, there are really good resources on Noon site, Cruisers Wiki, Facebook groups. So yeah, that pretty much sums up bureaucracy. So the third negative for sailing in the Mediterranean is, of course, the weather. So you will hear loads of cruisers say the Mediterranean is either too much wind or not enough wind. And that is definitely what we've found. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Now you might think you would be going to the Mediterranean for the nice weather, which, do you know what, in a lot of cases it is mm. beautiful, sunny, warm weather, sometimes very, very hot, but the weather for sailing, that's where it becomes a little bit of an issue. Now, just as a broad spectrum, most boats are designed to be sailed between 10 knots and 20 knots. This is like the sweet spot of sailing. The weather's not too bad that the sea's too rough, 
but it's not too low that you know you can actually still make good distance well unfortunately in the Mediterranean 50% of the time it will be under 10 knots and 50% of the time it will be above 20. We found ourselves motoring a lot more than we thought we would. And on another note, when it comes to the Mediterranean, the weather forecasting isn't as reliable. And that's because there's a lot of local effects on the weather predictions. So as a whole, you might see that yes, there is, you know, greater wind or a low pressure or a high pressure, but you can't really tell for the local effects. So generally in the mornings you have less wind is what we found and in the afternoons you get greater wind but on a weather prediction it will just say 15 across the board but you could be getting 30 knots in the afternoon which ideally you don't want to be out in. One of the other effects of the weather and the Mediterranean Sea is that because it doesn't really <laughs> is that because it doesn't really have tides uh, the if there's no wind the sea flattens out quite quickly but that also means that if there is a lot of wind, you get this really sharp, choppy wave, which really can hinder making progress on a boat. And we were kind of forewarned about the short, choppy, uncomfortable nature of waves in the Mediterranean, and that's definitely what we found. Compared yeah. to the kind of steady Atlantic swell we were used to before, this was very, very uncomfortable, very short, choppy waves in the Mediterranean. Yeah. And on top of that, I think we were very surprised by the amount of storms, <laughs> and maybe this was lack of research before we got to the Mediterranean, but we found ourselves like sailing away from storms so regularly that it was, it was quite shocking for us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So on the topic of storms in the Mediterranean, this isn't something that we were able to find much information on other than there is storms in the summer. But as far as sailing goes, we didn't know this going into the Mediterranean. What we did know is that the Mediterranean has named winds. So there are specific winds around the Mediterranean that can blow very strongly and reach wind speeds into the 50s, 60s and sometimes higher. This year we seem to have seen a lot of people talking about highest storms they've ever experienced in the Med, most unpredictable weather they've experienced in the Med. Yeah. So it could just be a fact of this year's a bit of an anomaly or that it's getting worse. Um, so obviously this might not be everyone's experience, but this has been our experience and also a lot of people we've spoken to. With that being said, we wouldn't like you to judge your own trip to the Mediterranean on this because it might not be like this every year. We've only really yeah. sailed in the Mediterranean for one season because the rest of it was getting to the Mediterranean. Yeah. So obviously do your own research and I guess as well it's something that cruisers will just learn to deal with and adapt to which you can with most other things like people do it in the Caribbean yeah. um, and I think for us it was just the lack of preparedness that that's what it would be like because we yeah. haven't really heard many people speaking about it. So that is that point I think summed up. Yeah. So our number four reason not to sail in the Mediterranean is how busy it gets. The Mediterranean is notoriously busy, everyone warned us about it, everyone told us about it, but I don't think anything prepared us for how close you are in anchorages to other boats yeah. and how intimidating it can be with all these charter boats surrounding you, some dropping anchor on top of your anchor, um, and it's definitely one of our least favourite things we found about the Mediterranean. So like Jade says, it's one thing with it being really, really busy, but the thing that makes it intimidating and sometimes dangerous is how close people are. It's the proximity. So some of the anchorages we went in, realistically, you should only be able to fit maybe 10 boats in there, but in the Mediterranean, they managed to fit 50. So there's anchors everywhere. People don't have enough chain out and the, the, the night's sleep that you might get might not be as comfortable as you would have wished. And the real problem comes into play when you are trying to hide from a storm and a few times we've got to an anchorage where there is no room and definitely no safe room and all the marinas are completely full and we've yeah. had to press on and motor or sail through a storm to attempt to get to the next protected anchorages or the next marina and that's when it can be really, really frustrating and obviously you you know you have to understand why it's busy people love the mediterranean it's beautiful yeah. so that's the double-edged sword anywhere yeah. appealing to cruise is gonna get busy that's the thing when the med is good it's really good yeah and the best way to i guess counteract this is sail not in peak season yeah which we did for a short while and it was absolutely beautiful it was so quiet it was really lovely the biggest downside for us was the water temperature was obviously a bit colder yeah. than we would have liked and one thing that you might not think about 
but is another thing if you're after the quiet lifestyle is that when it's that busy you will have jet skis you will have speed yeah. boats you could have party boats we had one boat doing the macarena with about 100 people on deck yeah so there's also a factor of noise disturbance there was one anchorage we was in where there was a lot of jet boats mm -hmm. and they were constantly storming through yeah. the anchorage and in the end we had to move so not just the proximity but also there's sometimes a bit of a party culture so the last thing that we have as a reason not to sail in the mediterranean is the marine life now this works both ways because one of our first things with the marine life is that there is a lack of marine life yeah. if you're into fishing you're probably not going to catch as much fish and it's a little bit more seasonal and also there's a lot of fishermen in the Mediterranean that's kind of why there isn't as many fish. So obviously there are pockets where there's a lot of life, there's some protected nature reserves that have got quite a lot of fish, there's kind of sword fishing areas but overwhelmingly you know if you're going to be in an anchorage you're not going to see a lot in the Mediterranean. No. There's exceptions but this in our experience you know there's beautiful clear blue waters but there's just not much life anywhere yeah uh, and that was I mean we kind of knew the Mediterranean was overfished but we would like to have seen healthier yeah. ecosystems when we went snorkeling and yeah that's been a downside for us. It was one of the things we was really looking forward to was seeing what wildlife we could see whilst on on our trip through the Mediterranean and although we did get to see quite a few bits it was very rare that it actually happened mm. so most of the time we would actually see these animals is when we was on a, a passage and it would be from quite a distance but we wanted to see a lot more whilst we was free diving and snorkeling and unfortunately in those places closer to shore there just wasn't as much and on the topic of, I guess, the fishing industry in general, another downside for us was the amount of fishing pots. Yeah. And this is more from just a safety and, you know, enjoying your sailing <laughs> yeah. point of view, in that we just couldn't do overnight passages in loads of places because the amount of fishing pots, there was, honestly, there was hundreds in some yeah. places, hundreds yeah. and hundreds, and our radar is quite good at picking up certain types of fishing pots. Yep but not the majority of them that we saw in the Mediterranean. Sometimes so, they were just using a pot bottle. Yeah, just like a, a Coke bottle floating yeah. on the surface. Um, so that was a big downside for us, the, the fear of hitting and getting tangled in these fishing yeah. pots. And of course, we did get tangled in a ghost net. And we saw, we spoke to quite a few other boats, this also happened too. Yeah. So it definitely is a problem in the Mediterranean, the fishing industry in general. Without going into a rant, we do feel like needs a lot of attention. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> And a bonus point that kind of ties in with the marine life is orcas. Now we know a lot of people are worried about orcas when trying to get to the Mediterranean and there's a lot of people that do sail into the Mediterranean with no problems but it's definitely something that I think yeah. people are going to have to start thinking about. There are a few sailors that we've actually spoken to that have told us that they kind of got to the entrance or close to the entrance of the Mediterranean and went down to the Canaries to cross the Atlantic. Uh, just because they didn't want to run a gauntlet and risk the mm -hmm. chance of their boat being damaged. Yeah. It's not so much about the odds of their boat being damaged, it's just that if they're one of the unlucky few, they couldn't afford to fix their boat. Um, essentially and the end of the dream. Essentially, yeah. yeah. So that was the main reason why they didn't do it. It's not that they didn't want to, it was just that it's too great a risk for a lot of people. And I'm hearing this more and more, unfortunately. Obviously, thousands of boats pass through this route without anything happening to them. Uh, we obviously had a, an interaction on the north coast of Spain and there was no damage caused. It was really scary in the middle of the night, but there yeah. was no damage caused. See, we have spoken to some people on both sides, some that have seen orcas and nothing's happened, and some that have seen orcas that have attacked and damaged their boat. So, it you know, it's really up to you and it's just something that you have to another one of the many challenges and potential risks of sailing. So with all of those negatives being said, you all I'm sure know the wonderful things the Mediterranean has to offer and it's just absolutely stunning. There's so much culture, so much history, crystal clear, beautiful anchorages. Warm water. <laughs> warm water. Um, amazing food. Amazing food and amazing scenery, you know, in an anchorage you can be surrounded by beautiful green meadows or green forests yeah. or dramatic cliff faces and it's been absolutely, it's a breathtaking area to cruise, it's just stunning and there is a lot of anchorages to choose from, if you can get a space. 
So with all of this being said, we have decided to leave the Mediterranean next season. And it's kind of just because of a few of the points we've mentioned mainly. We obviously have no regrets and we're so happy that we did decide to go to Absolutely. the Mediterranean. We've learnt so, so much and I think become better sailors than we were before. Yeah. And it really does all depend on what you want from your cruising experience. If you're looking for good food, culture, history, lovely people, you will love the Mediterranean. And do you know what? You will adapt to the negatives because everybody does yeah that everyone still has to deal with all of these things and it doesn't stop them cruising the mediterranean if anything you'll just become a ninja of finding the perfect spots yeah. in a busy place for us personally a big reason that we chose the sailing lifestyle was the marine life and um, Bryn is a marine biologist so it was very much something that we wanted to study more and get more involved yeah. with and also to be off grid and alone yeah. Half the time. yeah. <laughs> and that's why we enjoyed passages so much yeah but it was a lot harder in the Mediterranean to find those places in peak season. I think when we look back at some of our favourite memories of cruising in the Mediterranean, a lot of it was off peak and it was yeah. when we were alone in breathtaking anchorages and we could just swim off the boat and not worry about being hit by a jet ski or yeah. a, a charter boat pumping their toilets or something next yeah. to us. And that's the reason that we're, I guess, seeking some maybe quieter, less popular cruising grains, just because that suits what we're looking for a bit more. Yeah. So that about sums it up. I hope you really enjoyed this video. We had fun coming up with some of these ideas and thinking about our experiences in the Mediterranean. I'm sure there's gonna be some seasoned Mediterranean sailors that disagree with us on some of these points. But this is our experience. This is, we just wanted to share with you our thoughts. So if you did enjoy this video, please give it a like. If, you're, if this is your first time here and you enjoyed it, hit subscribe and go back, watch some of our experiences. And if you do disagree or you have some different points, put them down in the comments. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Here she is, a little <laughs> troublemaker. There she is. Look at her, she's so cute. Say hello. Oh, she's a good girl. <laughs> Bye. Mwah. And cut. <laughs>